also would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of this land, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I would like to uh, acknowledge the, the elders past and present. In the last five years, now Dana did say that I'm going to talk about detention and visiting. I have got a completely different script. Um, but during that five minutes at the end of my presentation and during the break time as well, uh, if you have any questions you can ask me, um, I will definitely run into some of the, the stories that I have heard while visiting detention center and also through my own experience as well. In the last five years, Australia has spent many billions of dollars uh, to stop refugees coming into uh, this country. Australia's mistreatment of re refugees is nothing new. Under the, the Hawke government in the late 80s, they introduced uh, Migration Legislation Amendment Act to deter and intimidate refugees choosing to come to Australia. Keating government in 1992 introduced mandatory detention. And then in 1994, that was turned into indefinite detention. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the Howard government took the, the refugee uh, discourse to a new level by introducing temporary protection visas, Pacific Solution, and also uh, introduced new languages uh, referring to refugees, such as illegal immigrants, uh, economic migrants, queue jumpers, and, and so on. I came to Australia during the Howard government's time. I came in 1997 uh, as a 13-year-old unaccompanied minor. I'm from uh, northern uh, Sri Lanka. I, wh when I came to Australia, I was detained for three months in Willowwood Detention Centre. So I have that uh, small, compared to these days, uh, relatively uh, small um, experience in detention centres. Before I came to Australia as a refugee, I witnessed um, some horrific uh, uh, events uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, while I was uh, living in northern Sri Lanka, my uh, school was bombed by the, the Sri Lankan army. Uh, the school that I was studying in on September 22, 1995, Sri Lankan Air Force came and dropped seven bombs in which I had to witness my own brother being cut in half and, and murdered. Uh, three of my cousins were murdered on the same day. Uh, many of my friends died as well. So after that, I lived in a refugee camp uh, internally displayed in a jungle area called Vanni. Um, I stayed there for more than a year and a half and then decided to uh, flee Sri Lanka and come to Australia as a refugee. So when I came here, like I said, I was detained in Willowwood Detention Centre uh, for three months uh, for a young boy to be uh, locked away uh, in a small area surrounded by total strangers was a scary experience. The first night I was crying, they locked me in a, in a small room and I asked them to let me out of the room. I was, you know, I was, uh, I was crying and then um, after a couple of hours they had to let me out, uh, otherwise the door would have broken. Um, but I, I had some, uh, you know, terrible experiences uh, in the detention centre, but 18 years on, being in the community, one of the things that I remember from my detention days is the moments when the visitors came and uh, brought food for us, uh, spoke to us and uh, you know, gave us company. You know? Those are the moments that I remember 18 years on. And this is why visiting detention centres is very important. You know, during the dark days, some of the things that keep uh, refugees um, happy, I guess distracted from the, uh, the bad experiences is uh, the visitors. 
While I was released into the community after three months being in detention, many of my friends um, were kept in detention centres for uh, many years uh, towards the, the end of 90s. Um, one of my friends was kept in detention centre for uh, more than 36 months. With the popular movement in the mid-2000s uh, in support of refugees, uh, in 2007, we were able to bring an end to temporary protection visas. We were able to bring an end to the, the Pacific Solution and indefinite detention. That's, it, that's when the Howard government was kicked out. We had the, the Rudd government uh, got elected. Unfortunately, that turned out to be temporary. While refugees were fleeing Middle East, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, and other parts of the world, under the Gilad, Rudd, Abbott government, refugees faced more problems than they did under the Howard government. Indefinite detention was, uh, you know, came back again. Torture of children, forced adults to commit suicide, separate families so that they will never be able to unite with their, um, unite again. Denied basic rights for refugees in the community. You know, we, I found as part of my work with Tamil Refugee Council, refugee, a pregnant woman, seven month pregnant woman, sleeping on the floor. Once in Mill Park, I found uh, a couple of Tamil refugees who were living on uh, biscuits for a couple of days because they didn't know where to go and get food. And now under the Abbott government, you know, we've seen um, uh, refugee boards being towed back to um, overseas, uh, to Indonesia and other parts of the world uh, without little care for the, the, the lives of those refugees. While, you know, all these things that I have spoken about, there has been other mistreatment of refugees as well. Uh, in 2009, or in 2012, uh, the Gilad government introduced a process called enhanced screening process, which means they give you about 15 minutes to, uh, you know, f within 15 minutes you have to prove that you're a genuine refugee. If you don't um, convince the authorities that you're a genuine refugee within 15 minutes, you get deported back. At the end of 2012 to by middle of 2013, we had over 1,500 Tamil refugees sent back to Sri Lanka because of the relationship Australia had with then Rajapaksha regime in Sri Lanka. And some of you may not be aware, um, Rajapaksha, Rajapaksha, I'm up, coming towards the end of my speech, Dana saying it. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up quickly. Uh, in 2009, the Rajapaksha regime uh, according to the United Nations, killed over 70,000 Tamils. And according to the uh, Tamil counts, over 146,000 Tamils uh, remain unaccounted for. And this is the regime we sent 1,500 refugees uh, back to. Uh, since 2009, Australia detained over uh, 55 uh, asylum seekers um, because they were found as a security threat to Australia. Uh, in 2013, United Nations um, called, uh, called it a uh, torture and, and claimed that Australia had violated over 150 international laws. They even called on the Australian government to compensate and release these refugees into the community. And I have come to know some of these uh, refugees by visiting them in detention centre. Some of them have been kept for more than seven years. Uh, most of them have been in detention centre for over six years. In the recent times, uh, some of them have been released, uh, but there are still uh, many more uh, in Mitre and Villawood detention centre. Uh, you know, while we have been uh, mistreating uh, refugees in, in Australian detention centres and Christmas Island, uh, this offshore detention centre is, is another story of Australia's uh, cruelty towards refugees. There are over 2,000 refugees uh, on Nauru and Manus Island. Uh, there are many children and adults uh, in these camps suffering. 
two weeks ago, uh, I received a, a photographic evidence from a refugee on Nauru, uh, which shows a five-year-old uh, girl on Nauru in tears, watching her dad, uh, who climbed up on a tree and threatened to commit suicide for nine hours. There are many children in such situation in these offshore detention centers. One thing that I will tell you is that all these, you know, while all these refugees are being mistreated, while all these uh, refugees are suffering, something that uh, gives them hope is the people in the Australian community, the people who care about them, the people who visit uh, refugees uh, in detention centres, people who maintain contact with uh, the refugees uh, on Nauru and Manus Island. I strongly encourage all of you to get involved uh, in visiting detention centres, help refugees who are uh, in the community. If we are going to build another popular movement, I think it's already popular, it's about time uh, we're going to uh, free the, the refugees. If we're going to have another popular movement that is going to put a permanent stop uh, to the mistreatment of refugees, that, you know, that would only uh, come through people at the grassroots level getting involved in, uh, in the refugee movement through visiting refugees and through your involvement with uh, ASRC and other groups. Um, all I want to say is, um, you know, when I came into the refugee movement in 2009, I never thought that I was going to be involved in it for uh, six years. I thought it would end by within a year or two. Uh, here I am for six years, uh, but I am quite hopeful you're not all going to be involved in the refugee movement for another six years because we're going to free the refugees very soon. We're going to help refugees break free from those chains in the detention centres on the Australian mainland and in offshore detention centres. Thank you.